Let's talk a little bit more about the prophetic, um, the prophet, the prophet, the prophet. Somebody say the prophet. Well, there's some things that I want to talk about with the prophet, and then um, I'm going to talk about utterances, uh, distinguishing different utterances. And I'm going to say this because, you know, the Bible talks about how there's no utterance that is, doesn't have a distinction or sound, doesn't have a distinction, doesn't have a purpose behind it. And so we want to discern prophetic utterances. You can tell when something is not from God versus when something is from God. Amen. And um, the first way to know that is through the word of God itself. The Bible tells us, amen, that we should judge prophecy. Amen. We should judge prophecy. So, um, matter of fact, um, well, in judging prophecy, the first thing would be is how much of the word of God do you know? How many know that deception works through a lack of knowledge? Deception. One of the, the main ways the devil comes, in the Bible talks about Satan comes to steal, to kill, and destroy, right? And that's in John 10. John 10, 10. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And then it says also that the enemy tempts us, right? He deceives, right? And he accuses. There are the three things the devil does. Tempts, deceives, and accuses. I found this out in my own life, and I'm sure many of you have experienced this as well, that the enemy can't tempt you with something. Come on. Then he'll try to bring deception through some lack of knowledge you have. And if he can't get you in regards to the lack of knowledge because you have a knowledge, he'll try to bring accusation against you. How many see that connection there? So discerning the enemies, uh, how the enemy works and operates, and then you, you know the word of God, come on, it's pretty clear, come on, that how prophecies, what they're supposed to be, how they, how they are. And sometimes people get into prophesying things that they shouldn't be trying to prophesy. For example, um, you know, even prophets, uh, most prophets don't go around telling people who to marry. Come on, amen. How I many know that's a really low-level stuff? You should have enough discernment, <laughs> come on, and enough knowledge and be equipped enough to make the decision about who you're going to marry. Come on, amen. <laughs> but you got people prophesying about stuff that, you know, about people marrying people, and then they get, how I many know you get married, and then they mad at the prophet because the prophet prophesied. Come on, amen. And they realize this is nothing but hell on earth. Come on, Amen. I don't know why I listen to that prophet. Come on, amen. So uh, one of the things I don't like to do is give people prophetic words to help them make those kind of decisions. Come on, amen. There are times where God will give confirmation to something that someone has been praying about and believing all of a sudden it will all of a sudden come out. God will bring confirmation to them. But I don't like to be giving people words about that. And a lot of times, even when I see people together, I don't assume they're married. Amen. And, uh, and I don't just start praying for them. I ask them questions, you know. Um, people don't realize that prophets really don't know everything. Come on, they can't see everything that you're dealing with. They only see what God reveals to them and shows them. Come on, amen. I mean, I've had people years ago that would tell me they hated to be around me because they were scared I might see something. Come on, amen, in their life. They, they said it's really uncomfortable to be around you because the way God uses you and the things might happen, he might show you stuff. But how many know if you're walking up right with God, you ain't got no reason to be afraid, come on, of a, of a prophet. Come on, if you're in pursuit of the Lord, come on, amen. So, but... Prophecy is to be judged. The Bible even talks about uh, in the scripture to uh, in the uh, 14th chapter, it talks about judging prophecy. And um, let's see, where do we start here? Where am I going to start? Mm -hmm. If you go to the 14th chapter, look at verse, let's see here, uh, 1 Corinthians. That's, I think I was there when I left. Oh, I started, okay. 1 Corinthians 14, and in verse, um, let's see here, verse... Uh, 28 it says but if, if there's no interpreter let him keep silence in the church let him speak to himself and to god let two or three prophets speak and that the others judge that the others judge amen but if anything is revealed to another who sits by let the first keep silent but let me just stop there before i go any further on this here let the others judge isn't it amazing how prophets and even mainstream prophets are not being judged come on how many know that and their, their, their prophetic words are not being judged. And so the danger with that is that someone gets up, come on, they're a national, you know, TV or come on on Facebook. Come on, everybody's seeing them. And they're prophesying things that you can't even judge. Come on, amen. And say this is a, of God or not. Come on. And um, there was one lady, and I don't want to, I'm not trying to bring out, I ain't trying to hit no of your favorites. Come on, amen. I might be hitting somebody's favorite. 
But one woman said she took a, a rod and she was on Facebook talking about she's going to knock the hurricane over into the ocean. How many remember that? And some of y'all don't know, but she was, I'm going to knock that hurricane into the ocean. Y'all, I'm just going to do it right now. You know, and hurricane still tore up Florida. Come on, amen. Come on, amen. Uh, this stuff needs to be judged. Come on, amen. But these people are not accountable because they're too big and too popular. Come on, amen. How many back, remember back uh, a while ago they were prophesying about who was going to become president? And they were talking about, you know, uh, somebody saw, they saw a mitt. You know, a mitt. The Lord showed them a mitt. You know, mitt, mitt, romp. Come on. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Come on. <laughs> and, I, and I was praying, and the Lord was showing me that Obama was going to become the president. And I was like, no, God, no. God was showing it to me. I had two dreams. And I told the church. I was in, you know, you know, uh, you know, I was in the church. I was not pastoring. I was in the church. I told the church. They were mad at me. They said, oh, you're just doing it because you're black. And, you know, Obama's black, you know. <laughs> I said, no, I'm not. I'm trying to tell y'all. I saw this in a dream that this man was going to become president. And uh, I saw it two times. That, I mean, each year when it would happen, the Lord said he's going to get it again. He showed it to me. I, I, I was in a dream, and I said, shook this hand and said, nice to meet you, Mr. President. I said, no, in the dream. I said, literally, I said that in a dream. I was like, no, God, no. I woke up, and, and, and I was like, no, 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 because I started looking at the agenda he had. And the stuff he was doing, I said, this is not according to God's word. This is not, God, why does the devil got the ride come on the back of the black man into the White House? I was mad. Come on, I was mad. Come on, amen. And so uh, how many know that prophecy's got to be judged? Come on, amen. Hallelujah. And I submitted it. Nobody wanted to receive it, but I, I submitted it. Come on, amen. What do you think about this? And it happened. Come on, amen. Two, the, the, the terms, the two sec executive terms. He got it. Come on, amen. And, and, and what did it do? It spewed out some, come on, amen. Come on, amen. This homosexual thing was just praised in the White House. Come on, amen. Rainbow was on the White House. Come on. Rainbow light. Uh, uh, and uh, so, but people are prophesying things because they out of their emotions and out of their, their self and their desire to see something happen a certain way. And nobody can judge it. I'm telling you, the church structure needs to get more. People need to get more into the church structure. We need more apostolic authority. Come on, in the church. We need more people connected. Come on, to a local body where they, they can be judged. I don't care how big you are, how popular you are. Your prophecy needs to be judged. Come on, amen, from the word of God. Amen. So, um, and I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, you know, I don't know. Some of, the, some of these things, I believe, some of the prophetic things are being spoken uh, uh, out you know, uh, in the mainstream, um, I'm, it's, I'm almost concerned that maybe it shouldn't be spoken out in the na mainstream, that it should be spoken to the body of Christ. Come on, amen. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. And be tested and proven first before it's released out on the mainstream. Amen. Because what it's doing is it's causing people, come on, amen, to, to be, come on, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, what's the word for it? Like, uh, you know, uh, renegades. Um, and, and, and then it causes the church to look bad. Come on, amen. Church looking bad. Bring that thing and subject it to the leadership so people can judge that prophetic word before you release it. Come on, amen. Let people pray over that thing. Get the mind of God. See if that's really what the Lord is saying before you release it in the mainstream and affect all of the church or people in the different uh, areas hearing this. And then they get confused. They say, what is this prophet stuff? Come on, amen. Hallelujah. That was good. Amen. Hallelujah. That was good. Uh, and, and is there such thing as these uh, uh, national prophets? Come on. Amen. To the world. But, but why? I mean, in regards to think about this. If it's not subjected. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. And they're not connected to the body. Come on. Amen. I'm questioning them. I mean, I've watched people get taken off the scene. And some people call it. Oh, well, you know, they're, you know, it was their time. The Lord just took them. Mainstream prophets get take, taken out. And you wonder, why, why did they get taken out? Kim Clement. John Paul Jackson. What, what happened there? I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> no, come on. There, there's it's a warning here about giving out prophetic words. Come on, y'all, amen. 
not being judged. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. And also, there's a danger of giving words. Come on, amen. To get people to believe something that's not true. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. And also, people can look more at you than they look at what look at God. And God don't like that. Come on, amen. I, I, you know, I, I love Miles Monroe. Uh, powerful man of God. Excellent teacher of the word. Very simple. But he, he got taken out. He got taken out suddenly. He got taken out horribly. Some, how many of you heard of Miles Monroe? Anybody? Some, some people? Miles Monroe got taken out suddenly. Well, you can go back and look at some of his video clips on YouTube. And he made a statement, a few statements. He made a statement one time. He said, um, don't nobody want to hear about no blood on no cross. And I went, no, 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 no. He's talking to businessmen. He was trying to talk about how we reach the world. He said, we don't need to be talking about no nails. We don't need to be talking about, come on, amen. Uh, he, said, he says, uh, with the door. He says, uh, he says, why are you bowing in front of a door? He said, Jesus was a door. Why are you bowing in front of a door? Walk in the door. He said, well, it sounds common sense, but you're, you're kind of taking the importance of Jesus away here. Come on, amen. You're not understanding, even though the symbolism is there. Talk about that symbolism, but keep Jesus at the center. And then he, then he made a statement. He had a little, he said, you know, Jesus didn't really die, you know. He said, Jesus kind of expired, you know, he just kind of, he released. Jesus didn't really die. Come on, y'all, amen. Just little statements like that were coming out. You know, you go and look, it's right on YouTube. Dangerous teachings. He said, people don't want to hear about it. He says, we need to talk about the kingdom. He said, people don't want to hear about, come on, this activity. They don't want to hear about it. He said, don't talk about no blood. Come on, amen. How many know we need to talk about the blood every day? I plead the blood right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So um, we just want to judge the prophetic here. And it says here, verse 30, but if anything is revealed to another who sits by, let the first keep silent. For you can all, watch this, y'all, prophesy one by one. You can all, what, prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be encouraged. So there's a knowledge that comes and there's an encouragement that comes. And the prophecy, the spirit of prophecy can come upon all of us in a service, especially people who are trained and experiment. They get, they get learn how to function in this. And how many of you can be trained in this thing? Amen. And how are you trained? I think it's more caught than it's taught, though. I think it's by becoming an association with people who flow in that realm. Come on, amen. And, and you catch that flow. You catch that anointing. It functions through you. That's how Brother Brian, you know how, I see how God uses Brother Brian? When he's here with me, he, he caught that thing. Come on, amen. He, he came into the church, got born again, got, got full of the Holy Spirit. And he was hanging around me. Come on, amen. And the rest of the body there, and he caught it. Come on, amen. And, and it just starts functioning through him. Come on, amen. Sometimes when he's prophesying, the, the accuracy of the words is so powerful. I said, man, these are, look at God, man. The Lord said, I want to make it greater in those who come, you know, receive from you. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, I love it when God does that because what he's saying to me is you're just a part of it. Somebody said you're just, you're just a part of it. You're not all of it. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will keep you humble. Amen. I get in my, in my body, in my local church, and what we're, what we're doing, the, the, my wife, God moves it through her, uses her in prophetic and preaching and things like that. My daughter's flowing it. My daughter's, one of my daughters is a prophetic singer. I, you, she was here before. Prophetic, she flows in the prophetic song of the Lord. It just comes right out of her. Um, you know, uh, I got another son who I'm working on. He's, he's got a gift also in the music. He sings. He raps. He, everything. Come on. It, he's just got a powerful gift in that area. Amen. And one of my sons, uh, he's in the jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I don't know why he's getting into this. Y'all pray for him. You know, he, he's talking about UFC. I'm tired. Son, come on. Get in. The, anyway, anyway, praise the Lord. God got it. He know, he know what he's going to do. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyway, he, he, uh, but he can pray. I mean, you're talking about anointed to pray. The spirit of prophecy comes upon him and to pray. He prays and the power flows out of him when he prays. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. I got one that went into the Marines. I got nine children, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> one that went into the Marines. Come on, amen. He came out. Come on, to the Marines about, man, how many years ago was that? He's, he's in, yeah, almost 30 now. And, uh, and he went into the Marines. He came out of the Marines. He's now in private security. God's really using him. 
in, in that place to help people. Come on, right on the, you know, uh, people who's dealing with, you know, po you know, poverty and struggling and, and uh, you know, criminal type activity going on. He's, he's there to help them. And I got one that's up here, Sherburne County area. Not up here, but he's a, he's a deputy sheriff. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. How many know God is putting them in different, but I don't know why they want to shoot and, and guard and wrestle and come on, amen. I don't know what that is. Come on, amen. <laughs> My boys want to do all this, you know, they just, anyway. Come on, amen. <laughs> oh, Lord. So, but the spirit of prophecy is on my family. How I many know you can transfer that thing through association? Come on, amen. Hallelujah. And no matter how much they try to run from it, it just gets on them. Come on, and God talks to them. He deals with them, gives them revelation, speaks to them in dreams. One of my sons was given a dream, and he saw uh, the, other one, the other one of them. I got five boys. So the other son uh, had a dream, and he saw a, a stage set. God showed him this. It's powerful. He said, and it was darkness on the stage. He heard a really eerie sound of music coming from the stage. He says, and people were, and he was sitting in with them, and he was sitting and he was watching this darkness on the stage and the sound. And he says, God, what is that? He came down. He said, he says, the Lord says, the darkness is entertaining you. Come on, y'all. Amen. God gave him that, gave him a revelation to show him how to get, you know, to get out of that darkness. Come on. Amen. Run from that darkness. Don't be entertained by it. How many know God's talking? Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so anyway, I'm talking about judging prophecy. I think that's what I was talking about, right? Oh, we may all prophesy one by one. So God wants us all to have that. Now, look at verse 32. And the spirits of the prophet are subject to the prophets. Powerful right there. Spirits of the prophets are what? Subject to the prophets. Some of you, I mean, I know you heard this stuff before, but it's good to repeat. If you have a prophetic gift, it, it can wait. If you have a prophetic word, it can wait. Come on, amen. You don't have to, come on, give that word right now. Come on, amen. The Spirit of God. Oh, I just, I just I got to give it right now. I gotta get. Yeah, of course, of course, there are times when the, especially God will open the door for that. He'll make it where it'll be the door. But if you're in a body with the others who flow in that same realm and that same thing, God can still, come on, amen, give you a chance to do it. But it may not be the time. He may want you to hold that and pray that thing through. And somebody else might have the same word that he wants them to deliver it. And you just hear it say, that's confirmation. God just spoke the same thing to me. Um, another experience I had. Um, I was in church. Get ready to start our church service. This was several years ago. Had to be my, almost 20 years ago. And uh, I was in a, in a service. Get ready to start. And a lady uh, came to the back. The back door. I came to the front door. I should say, come to the front. Come to the, come to the main entrance, I should say. And uh, as she came to the entrance, she said to one of the ushers, can you tell, um, you know, Pastor Calvin that I have a prophetic word for this church? So then when he, when he, he brought the information to me, and I said, to her, I said, go back and tell her that we really don't allow uh, prophetic, I don't like pr prophetic words being given to me before I preach or would minister because I have a group of people here in the body that can speak to me and she can hold that. I mean, you know what I'm saying? She wants to share that with me later. She can hold that to later. So I, I told him that. He went back and told her. She got upset. Come on, y'all. That was a sign right there that she was not hearing from God. Because God would never, you, would be, you should have been subject. You should have been able to hold that prophetic thing. So what does she do? She walks down in the middle of the church. She goes up to the mic, and she gives the mic, and she starts trying to prophesy to the congregation. You know what I said? Thank God my usher knew karate. Because this was a tall woman. She was like, a, I mean, I mean, she was tall. I mean, six something feet tall, big woman. Come on, amen. I said, thank God he knew karate because my goodness. I said, stop her right now. She's, and you know what her prophecy was? This church is cursed. It's doomed. Come to find out she was jealous because one of her, her people that she was praying with decided to come to church, get connected to a local body instead of being out. Come on, y'all. And she was jealous of it. And somebody said, now here's the kooky, weird Christian stuff because one guy, come on, amen, who was uh, caretaking the building, said, I've been seeing that woman. He said, I heard what happened up here. He came up. He said, I was seeing that woman standing out in front of the building, cursing it every day, just cursing that church, just cursing it. A weird manifestation. How many know prophetic and apostolic people, we draw weird people? We really draw weird people. Look around next to you and say, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so, so. 
So anyway, I, I'm just playing, y'all. Don't, don't, but, but there, there is a little bit of truth to that. I mean, there is. Okay. Hallelujah. Just a little, you know, just a little truth to that. Okay, so nobody's insulted, right? I just was playing, right? Okay, all right. Okay, so um, anyway, I started catching this. I'm saying, man, this woman tried to take and do this, and she had the spirit on her. She was operating in witchcraft because it was not the true prophecy of God, the true prophetic operation of God, because she was not a person who was submitted to authority. She didn't connect. Uh, and true prophets will always have that understanding. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. You learn it, though. You learn it by being part of mentoring, growing up in the things of God. If you, and a lot of times when people are not mentored, this is where you find a lot of these people who get into this kind of stuff. They're not mentored. They don't have anybody to, they can call spiritual, you know, father, mother, somebody that, you know, uh, has reared them spiritually. Come on, amen. That's when you get weird when you don't have any rearing. Amen. Get re you, need, you need rearing. And, and, and a lot of people go around talking about, well, you know, I just listen to the body of Christ at large. I, you know, I got my, my, my Sunday morning church service is, you know, on, uh, on YouTube or, 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 or Facebook. That's what I get my church from. And the thing is, that's dangerous because you're not, you don't have any accountability. There's no connection there. Amen. So you need a local body of people that you can stay, stick with and work with. Come on, amen. That can watch you. The Bible even says this, to know those who labor among you. Come on, amen. We need to know each other. And then one, uh, one time he says, uh, well, basically in this same passage, he talked about how you can know that some people have the gift of interpretation of tongues. That's why he said if there's no interpreter, come on, then, you know, be, be silent. In other words, he was saying, now how many know how can you be silent? Come on, there's no interpreter. You got to, come on, amen. What he's saying is that you should know whether there's an interpreter in there. In other words, you should know who flows in that. Who has that gifting? Who has that ability? Who, who operates in it? I wish we would get more into this. And in the, the word of God is not being taught in a way where we can get more into this. Come on, amen. And have it done in an orderly way. It's, it's a lot of, uh, um, you know, misinformation and pit, bits and pieces. And, uh, you know, like, for example, healing, for example. I believe that healing is for today. And, and, but you got people teaching right now that God don't want to heal everybody. And God don't heal everybody. Don't be preaching that. You're preaching error. That's what they say. That's not what the Bible said. Oh, wait a minute. Come on. You know, and, and I hate when that happens. But that comes because people who have been reared, they probably weren't reared properly. Like, you know, they go to a cemetery, seminary, seminary. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and they come back spiritually dead. Come on, amen. And then they intellectual all in their head. And when they teach and instruct you, come on, amen, they teaching you out of the head. Come on, amen, and not come a revelation of, of the Lord. Because if you knew Jesus, you would heal everybody. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. If you knew Jesus, you would be wanting everybody to be healed. Come on, amen. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Healing is for today. I told you how the devil tried to attack my wife, and, uh, and they said she had cancer. And we went in, and I said, <laughs> I said, what? Come on, the devil is alive. Come on, amen. We walked in there, sat down with the lady. She goes, you guys are sure calm to be hearing this kind of no news. And I was like, mm, well, come on, amen. I was thinking in my mind, mm -hmm. She kept talking. And she said, well, you come back. We'll come back and we're going to do the test. We'll come back. We've already found some stuff that we see is wrong. I said, no, the devil is alive. Not accepting it. We got back. Get ready to do it. Get ready to tell us about it. The woman said, ain't no sign of no cancer. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. The enemy wanted to try to put that. Come on. You see? But how many know the word says, by his stripes we were healed? Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm receiving healing right now. Come on. Somebody say, I'm receiving healing right now. Come on. Amen. In Jesus' name. You see, people getting healed right now. While you're saying that, it's working. Woo! Hallelujah. See, and that comes with prophetic ministry, and they, 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 whew, we flow like that. Come on, amen. We flow like that. We believe people should be healed. Amen. Delivered. Come on, amen. Set free. Woo! I'm getting pumped right now. Hallelujah. It's one of my favorite topics, that healing thing. God is so busy wanting to heal us. Matter of fact, now see, I'm, I'm all off topic, but it's okay. God is so wanting to heal us. Come on, amen. Till he's made our physical bodies heal themselves. 
That's right there. There's a sign right there that healing is God's will. Come on, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The minute you scratch yourself, it starts working on healing. Come on, your body's still trying to get work. See, the devil got you thinking that God is putting a sickness on you. Well, if that's the case, don't take any medication. Don't let the doctor work with you. Just go ahead and take that suffering. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. If God is putting it on you, stop trying to get out of it. Come on, amen. Take that, that beating. Come on, amen. Take that sickness. Take it. Come on. I don't believe it at all. I believe that healing is ours today. God is really busy wanting to heal us. Come on, amen. And he's wanting us to stay well. Come on. Live out our full quarter of days. Come on, amen. He wants to have a long life, length of days. Come on, amen. He wants to add peace to us. Come on, amen. Wow, I'm getting pumped right there. Woo, hallelujah. All right. Now, here it says here, for God is not uh, the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So God is a God of order. He's not in confusion. Any of the gifts that operate. Next scripture is really a good one. Let your women keep silence in the church. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> some of, some of y'all laughing. Y'all think it's funny. Uh, uh, like that's going to happen. Huh? <laughs> Let the women keep silent in a church. Come on, amen. <laughs> See, you got to realize that he was talking to a situation here. This was not him just telling the women should keep silence in the church. He was saying, this is getting out of control here. This is, this is happening now. The, the women, how many of the women are more prone to be more spiritual than most men? Come on, amen. <laughs> That's true. So he's like, get them quiet in the church. Come on, amen. Get them quiet. It's getting out of control here. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. He's speaking to a situation, and I'm going to tell you right now, anybody, even a man, can be in the flesh ministering to God's people. Come on, amen. So we're not looking for a man to talk to us any either. We're looking for the Holy Spirit to talk to us. <laughs> Come on, get in the Spirit. Come on, amen. And if God could use Deborah in the Old Testament and Halda and all these other prophetic women Come on, to speak. Why in the world is he trying to stop us now in the New Testament? I believe he's trying to let us get free. Come on, amen. Speaking to order, people. Come on, amen. Speaking to order. Because they had to really set up different. You know, like when I go to India or to Africa, some parts, they'll have women on one side, and they'll have the men on the other side. Come on, amen. I hate when they do that. And the women have this little dolly on their head, you know what I'm saying? And, and I'm like, oh, you know, we're bound up in legalism here. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. You can wear that rag all you want on your head. That don't mean you're subjected to nobody. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, amen. <laughs> Come on, amen. Yeah. And so, you know, you know, the women would ask the questions to their husbands across. This is what was happening in the Old Testament. In Old Testament. They would ask the questions across to their husbands, and the confusion was breaking out too. That's another passage of Scripture where he addresses the women being silent in the church. That they wanted to know. They're hungry. Somebody said the women are hungry. They want to go deeper in God. Come on, amen. It's time that women get set free from bondage. Come on, amen. Prophetic women get released into their purpose. I remember when I was in India and I was preaching one day. The Lord told me to preach. He says, talk about this. Talk about what happens when God anoints a woman. <laughs> I said, God, you want me to preach that? He said, yep, preach that. I said, I'm going to do it, Jesus. You told me to do it, I'm going to do it. Come on, amen. So I got up and started preaching about it, and the pastor was translating for me. <laughs> that was too funny. And, and, and he, he had to translate what I was saying about the women and how men hold women back and all kind of stuff. I was just going at it, man. And, uh, and when I got done, women were crying. The presence of God was breaking the yokes off the women. You can see God touching them. And then all of a sudden, they came up and they said to me, they said, did you know that today is Mother's Day in India? Yo, come on. How did I know that? Come on, amen. Holy Ghost said, preach on that topic because he knew it was going to honor, come on, those women on that day. Come on, that's that prophetic thing. Come on, amen. God knows. Come on, already. Come on, what's happening? We got to get the right word. Come on. That brings me to utterances. How do you know when an utterance is coming from the Lord? Back to that again. An utterance, come on, it's coming from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. It's going to have, it's going to have certain distinction to it. Amen. 
All right, let's, let's do, look at something here. Go, to, go into your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 1, 5. We got another, we got about maybe 20, you know, 30 something minutes here left. And uh, 1 Corinthians 1 through 5, 1, 5, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians 1, 5. Apostle Paul is talking to the Corinthian church, and the Corinthian church were really blessed with the manifestation of gifts. Uh, before I actually do that, let me talk about this for a moment, because she, she had, uh, Pastor had mentioned to me something about a question concerning the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, prophecy, and those things. How do you know the difference? And people get mixed up. In that passage in 1 Corinthians uh, 12, it talks about, he gives to another the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom. Word of knowledge. What is the word of knowledge? The word of knowledge is knowledge of something. Okay, and it has to do with knowledge of something that happened in the past or knowledge of something that you couldn't know or something present. Word of knowledge. Okay, somebody say word of knowledge. You give that word. Now, notice it says word of knowledge, which means it's just a word, a simple word. You just give a word to a person, a word of knowledge. Word of wisdom is different. Word of wisdom is, I love this because a lot of times people get this mixed up with prophetic things. The word of wisdom is the ability to know what's going to happen, no, to know what to say regarding what's going to happen, know what to do, to know what to do for what's going to happen. Word of wisdom. I mean, a wisdom is applied knowledge, right? Applied knowledge. So I get wisdom to know what to do. It's based upon the future. Come on, Amen. Some instruction. I get knowledge about what to do based upon the future. Prophecy is just simply inspired utterance. The Spirit of God inspires you to say things. Come on, amen. The Spirit comes upon you. Prophets, the, the prophet speaking of prediction, come on, it's different because they're telling you what's going to happen in the future. They're saying this is going to happen in the future. Word of wisdom will be, see, this is what you do in order to see this happen in the future. You guys get it? Word of wisdom. This is what I do in order to see this happen. Let me say this. Prophecies, some prophecies are conditional. So when somebody prophesies over you and it doesn't happen, so it doesn't necessarily always mean that it's come on the prophet's fault. Because if you don't practice certain things, come on, amen, that thing won't come to pass. Then there are some, some prophecies that are unconditional. Like how many know Jesus is coming back? Come on, amen. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to be able to stop that. Come on, amen. There are certain things in the word. He's going to put his feet, feet down on Mount Olive. Come on, amen. And it's going to split. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. He's coming back. Come on, amen. With, with, with uh, myriads of angels and saints. And he's coming back. Come on, to bring us. Come on up. Come on, into that place with him. There's no way you're going to be able to stop that. That's an unconditional prophecy. But there are certain things God says to you in, in that prophetic word. You have to actually cooperate with it. You have to follow it, pray it through, stand with it. And say, this is what God said about me. I'm believing it. I'm going to see that thing manifested. Come on, amen? That's an unconditional, or I should say conditional prophecy. All right? All right. 1 Corinthians 1, 5. That in everything you are enriched by him. Watch this, you, all, you guys. In all utterance and in all knowledge. Isn't that good? You're enriched in all utterance and in all knowledge. Notice the difference between an utterance and knowledge. You see that? So I don't know if you guys got, maybe somebody might have some different speech or whatever. But utterance means the, the, uh, the given the gift and the ability to say it. Come on, amen, hallelujah. Or to say something specific that God wants to be said. That's utterance, amen. Um, when I found this out, that you, the enrichment occurs by when you're spending time in prayer and in the word of God. Come on, amen, hallelujah. And so then you're packing and you have this reservoir. Come on, amen, and you have accessible, you, it's accessible, but you can't deliver everything. Come on, amen, you can't release everything. You can't tell everything. You only tell what the Lord says. You're enriched in utterance. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Go to 2 Corinthians 8, 7. Let's look at another verse. 2 Corinthians 8, 7. Notice he says it again. Therefore, as ye, are, as ye are bound in everything, in faith, look at that, in utterance and knowledge and in all diligence and in your love to us, see that you abound in this grace also. Keep saying it again. Notice the difference between knowledge and utterance. 
having information isn't the, the same as having an utterance. Come on, amen. You might have no, knowledge about something, but you don't have the utterance to give it. And I've seen this happen in, in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 14, 26 services, for example, when you talk about how is it that you come together having a, a psalm, having a tongue, having a, having a revelation. Come on, amen. It needs about do all things decently in order, right? So what happens is when everybody thinks they got an utterance, confusion breaks out. Not everybody has the utterance, come on, amen, that needs to be released. I've watched people get up and say things in church, and, uh, and I say, man, they did not have the utterance. Amen. Um, and a perfect example of that is, a, is there was a guy who came into a church that I was attending, and he got up the pulpit to share something because it was an open mic, and uh, they let him get up and share. They didn't really know him. He was a guest, and they had the door, they had the thing open for everybody to share. Now, I mean, I think that's dangerous anyway because you need to know who you're dealing with. Well, he gets up and he says, I had a dream, and he says, the devil was chasing me, and he, and he says, in the, in the dream, it was a big uh, black woman, a big fat black woman. Church is full of white people. I'm the only black person sitting in there with some of my family, and we're just there visiting. I said, now, that statement was not an utterance from God. <laughs> because why did I say that? Because if I had to have one of my aunts or some of my family that maybe is a little bit overweight and big, and they hear that, they are quickly, they say, see what they think about us? You see, if he was in the spirit and he knew what to say, if he had an utterance from God, see, that's why you don't have, that pulpit has to be handled with care. Come on, amen. If he had the spirit of revelation on him, it was really God's utterance, he would know not to release anything like that out of his mouth. But he didn't have an utterance. He was just communicating knowledge. Come on, amen. I know it was a shocker, but that's what happened. Ephesians 6, 19. Go there real quick. Ephesians 6, 19. Another scripture verse. So the utterance has to be prayed for. And for me, verse uh, 19, Ephesians 6, 19, and for me, the Apostle Paul knew it, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel. Come on, somebody. So you need people to pray for you when you're going out to preach. Come on, amen. So that you would have an utterance, come on, to release the gospel. Last night in the car, uh, you know, all the brothers was there with me. They were all praying. And when we were praying, you could feel the unity in the car, the anointing, and, and they were praying that God would give me utterance. Come on, amen. To release what needed to be released. So I'm just waiting on the Lord to just speak it out, to release it. We are, in, we are in a ministry of spiritual operation. It is not a natural thing. It is not talking out of our heads. It's the spirit of inspiration, God coming upon you to release the right word at the right time. Come on, amen, hallelujah. Like earlier when I was talking about healing, I felt the spirit of God on that. Come on, amen. Really strong on that and, and speaking to people to receive healing. Yeah. Amen. Colossians 4. Let's look at another scripture here. Colossians, the fourth chapter. And he says it again. Colossians 4. Let you get there. 4 verse 3. With all, with all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. A door of utterance has to do Come on, it has to be prayed through. Come on, amen. A door of utterance. Somebody say a door of utterance. A door of utterance has to do with the recipients on the other end. Amen. As well. How many know that if people aren't rece receptive to you, come on, amen. You can't just go into any environment and preach. You have to go where the Lord tells you to go. The apostle Paul was forbidden to go certain places. Come on, amen. The Lord said only go here because that's a door of utterance for you. Come on, Amen. I, you know, certain environments, I can't stand to go in because the people are not ready to receive. Come on, amen. And, and so it will actually lower my utterance. It will limit what I can actually share with them. Come on, amen. When, and when I go into certain environments, people know how to receive me. I really step into what I am. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. It, because they know how to receive. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. So you're not called to everybody. And so you need to pray about who God is sending you to. Come on, amen, hallelujah. So uh, uh, that's an important thing. So uh, we got to have the right door, and so we got to speak in measures, learn to deliver what God, what the Lord is saying, and distinguishing God's words, and know where the source is coming from. Now, 
um, you can give words. I've had the enemy give me things to say. Didn't know it. Come on, amen. Now, let me know that you can, you can cross that thing and get over into a, where you're, the enemy is speaking through you, and you don't know you're doing it. Come on, amen. That's why you have to be living in the word and practicing God's presence. And I'll tell on myself in a little bit here, but I, I wanna, what I want to do is say this. We want to discern the utterances. Where, where is the source of what's coming out of you? What's motivating what's coming out of you? Come on, amen. So we're going to get into deliverance tonight. Come on, amen. Talk about deliverance tonight. But what's, 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 uh, what's causing you to say what you say? Why are you talking that topic all the time? Come on, you can locate people by their conversation. Come on, amen. So um, uh, go to Matthew 16. Let me show you this. It started to get good. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Matthew 16. For the sake of, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just do it because it, I think it's, uh, it's still good. Look at uh, 13th verse. Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And watch what happens. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Oh, I love this. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Now, notice how that happened so quickly. He didn't have to think about that. Come on, amen. It just like, bam, it was a revelation. He didn't say, by my calculations. <laughs> no, he said, you are the Christ of the son of the living. He began to spit, spit that out. And when he spoke that out, Jesus was so excited. Notice what happens. He says here, uh, Jesus answers to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona. Now, notice he didn't even say Peter. He said Simon. Now, I mean, that's significant. When Jesus calls you, come on, by a different name than what your name is, you got to look at the name. Simon means weakness. Reed shaking in the wind. Come on. He says Simon, weakness. Come on, amen. He's speaking to that. Then he goes, Simon bar Jonah. That means son of Jonah. How many know what happened with Jonah? He was speaking to his humanity side. He says, flesh for flesh and blood has not revealed. You didn't get this from your natural, come on, uh, 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 how you were born and who you are as a natural. He says, you didn't get this from that. It was revealed to you by my father who is in heaven. My father has revealed this to you. You got the revelation of who I am. You see that? He taps into a what? A revelation of who Jesus is, and he spits it out. And it's so powerful because it's being revealed to him. Now, let me tell you this about the Lord. He's not trying to deal with your mind as much as he's trying to deal with your spirit. The Bible said, I'm a spirit. Come on, amen. I have a soul. I live in a physical body. When you go in and look at, uh, I think it's 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. First or 2 Thessalonians, right around there. It says that you, are, you have a spirit, your whole spirit your soul, and your body. So your spirit is the real you. So when the spirit, and the Bible says in John uh, 4 that God, uh, 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 he says you worship God in spirit and in truth. He didn't say it in mind. Come on, amen, hallelujah. So God says, I want to communicate to your spirit. So you get revelation to your spirit, and it comes up. Come on, amen. And sometimes it goes past your mind. Come on, Amen. Your mind, your mind can't filter it. Your mind can't control it because you just get it and you speak it out and you're speaking out of your spirit. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. And that's what happened with Peter here. He's speaking out of his spirit. He's getting the revelation. God just revealed it to him. Now notice what happens, though. He, then he commands, okay, let's skip down to verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show in his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, you shall not, this shall not happen to you. Now, wait a minute. One moment he's getting a revelation from heaven, and in verse 23, but he turned and said to him, Peter, what? Get thee behind me, and then he changed his name again. <laughs> Get thee behind me, Satan. Now, wait a minute. Now, when Jesus says something, you need to pay attention. If he's going to call you Satan, that's serious. And he's not just using a little play of words because Jesus don't play with words. 
He said you're snared by your words. Your words. He's saying, he's saying, see, what he's saying is that this is Satan manifesting through Peter's flesh. Oh, y'all, come on, amen. So you want to know, prophetic people can miss it too. That's what you have to learn to be one who lives in that word, stays in the spirit, but you can get, amen, some stuff that's not from the Lord. And he says here, Satan, uh, he says, get behind me, Satan, you are not, you are, you are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. That's the nature of Satan. Mm, come on, y'all. That's the nature of Satan. Hallelujah. So now, so we need the wisdom of God. We need God's understanding for the purpose of, amen, uh, doing things right and producing fruit for the kingdom. And if you're getting false utterances, it won't, come on, amen, it, it won't produce the fruit. I want to see real salvation. I want to see real healing. I want to see real deliverance. And you got all these, come on, these false manifestations, amen, happening. And you got false conversions. I don't think that a lot of people that are having these, saying these prayers on the street are really getting born again. Come on, amen. Because the Bible talks about if you continue in my word in John 8, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So I believe that people have to be brought through a process. Come on, amen, hallelujah. I do believe it, that being reborn is an instantaneous thing, but I think that a lot of people are not being born again because their lifestyle is not changing. Come on, amen. There's not a change in their lifestyle. And so we need to, amen, begin to be protectors and defenders of the truth, amen, and begin to speak it and declare it. And that's how we protect it, by speaking it and declaring it. Amen? Uh, not necessarily arguing about it, but speaking and declaring it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right? So, um, and I'm going to close with this. The, I believe this in John 10. Go to John 10 with me real quick here. And we're talking about utterances still. The prophetic and discerning the utterances. When you get a when you get a wrong utterance, it can hurt people. Come on, amen. It can really hurt people. I said I was gonna tell on myself. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There have been times where out of the flesh saying things that literally do more harm than actually produce life. Amen. Sometimes with your family. Now, I'm going to know as a prophetic person, your words have power. So, especially when you're standing in an office of a prophet and you're functioning in that. So, if you're talking to your family members, like I've done this before and not knowing it. And I would start because I know what can happen. Come on, amen. From a certain action, I would start saying what's going to happen. Come on, amen. Instead of speaking life into them. You know, you see how that works? And that's when you get your mind focused on things of fear. Come on, amen. And it's worry, but you're not seeing God's picture for them. How many are getting this? And, and, you, and you don't see. That's why you got to see what God sees, because if you don't, you will speak death into your family, and you won't even know you did it. And, and then you'll start going, oh, my God, you start seeing the results of it. Because your words are powerful. And you say that, then they'll start believing that about themselves. Come on, amen. Glory to Jesus. So you got to watch what you're saying. Amen. And uh, a lot of times I found this that prophetic people who are wounded in some area in their heart, they tend to give out words like that. Come on. Amen. Speak out of their anger. Speak out of their frustration. Speak out of their fears. They're not speaking out of what God is revealing. Come on. Amen. But they're actually speaking out of a wound. And their fear of what's going to happen. Come on. Amen. Somebody starts speaking the word of God out your mouth about your family. Come start declaring what God says about your family. Don't say anything negative about what's going to happen with them. Amen? Start believing God. Hallelujah. Watch out for dreams. Watch out for supernatural manifestations that will try to come to you to speak to you anything that's not in the word about your family. Amen? No manifestations. I have people try to prophesy to me about my family, and they were not in the spirit. Come on, amen. When guy started trying to predict something, part of the reason why he did it was because he wanted to try to prove something. You know, a lot of times these spirits will manifest when the spirit of God is moving. Come on, amen. I was in a church in, in uh, Illinois area, and in this church, and I started praying for people, and they started getting filled with the Holy Spirit in his church. The, the anointing started falling. People were getting touched, and he was, he was, like, so blessed by it, but then he wanted to kind of show, well, I got some prophecy thing flowing through me, too. 
So he turns to me and he starts trying to give me a prophetic word. And when he does, in front of everybody, his word just changed the whole atmosphere and it, it was negative. Come on, amen. And I, I was like, no, I don't receive that. I didn't tell him that. I just let him say it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And he just spoke his word. And then, and then I just left out of that place. And I said, I do not receive it. Come on, amen. I do not receive it. Come on, amen. See, because some people speak out of their flesh because they want to be noticed. I've seen this happen. The anointing star is really moving here. And they both say, well, I got the prophecy thing too. Come on, amen. Well, well, watch out what you're saying because you may not be a prophet. You may, and if you have some words of encouragement you want to speak, that's, speak those words. Amen. But for some reason or another, he just didn't have it. And he tried to give it, and it was not the right word. All right? But in John 10, real quick here, because we're going to close out with this. Um, okay, it says, most assuredly I say to you, verse 7, I'm starting to read. Most surely I say to you, I am the door of the shepherd. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear from them. I am the door. If, any enters, if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief that does not come except to steal, to kill, destroy, and I've come that they might have life. They might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. I'm the good shepherd. Hallelujah. And gives his life for the sheep. Hallelujah. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. Oh, my goodness. Come on. Amen. So he's saying that, uh, and, then, and then if you, if you look back in verse 4, I want to refer to this. He says, and when he brings out his own sheep, it goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Come on. Amen. So here's the thing about the, the utterance of the Lord. Your spirit automatically will recognize the utterance of the Lord. If you spend time in the presence of God, you will know in your spirit that God is speaking. Have you ever sat in a service and heard someone talking and said, something's not right? I'm not getting it's something that's right, right right here. What he's saying, something's just not right. That's not fitting. Come on, amen. Your spirit man has a built-in system to be able to know the voice of God and to discern the utterance. That means when you spend time in the word praying and living in that place, you'll be able to recognize it more. You'll be sensitive to it. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. And you'll know when the enemy, come on, is trying to speak a word and communicate information. And so where am I going with this? When, whenever the Lord um, speaks, it's, it's going to activate you into your purpose. And what does the prophetic do? The prophetic activates the army of God. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. The prophetic activates the army of God. Are you the army of God? Then you're going to respond to the prophetic word of the Lord, and you're going to rise to the occasion. Remember when uh, Ezekiel was told to prophesy to the bones? And, and, and he was told to prophesy to the bones and talk about the dry bones. And, and he start, started speaking what God, because when the Lord says, can these bones live? And he was like, well, you know, Lord. He was waiting for for God to finish what he was, and, he, and, and basically God says to him, prophesy. Come on, amen. And when he starts prophesying, what happens is uh, uh, it starts causing the bones, come on, amen, to shake. Come on, amen. And, 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 and it, because why? They respond to the word of the Lord. God's people respond to the prophetic word. When it's a true prophetic word, it will shake you. It will make you come alive. Come on, amen. It will, it will enlighten you. It will bring you into deeper places with God when it's a true prophetic word from the Lord. Hallelujah. How many know the, the, sheep, uh, uh, the sheep know the voice of the Lord? And, and parents, come on, amen. I, I was reading something here about the, uh, the documentary on the life. Now I'm going to skip into some here. The documentary on the life of the penguins and how the, the, all them, they all look the same. Come on. But yet the mom, come on, amen, can hear, come on, amen, that, that little penguin, come on, in, in the midst of all of those little babies, can distinguish. How many know if God has put that in the, that lower life of animal, how much more has he put it inside the believer's life? Come on, amen. Hallelujah. I can know God's voice. I don't have to be in deception. I can know when an utterance is coming from heaven, when it's not coming from heaven, when it's coming from an evil spirit. I can know when it's coming from somebody's flesh. I can know. God put it inside of me to discern that. Come on, amen. Thank God for the prophetic. Come on, amen. So, and then um, another thing I was studying about was that the, um, uh, like the elephants, they can hear. Elephants can hear, under, they can hear from the ground, from their feet. Come on, amen. They can hear the low frequencies. Come on, amen. Real low frequencies. They can hear the rumble. Come on, amen. They know stuff is going on. Come on, uh, that's happening from that. 
They can sense danger. They know when, the earth, when, when weather changes or earthquakes are going to occur or things like this. They can sense and know things. Man, I'm telling y'all, we are blessed to be on a higher level of life and to be spiritually in tune with the Lord, and then we can discern spiritual things. We're supposed to be the most powerful people on the face of the earth, and the devil has made us second, come on, in some ways, in our mind. But I'm going to tell you right now, no witch, come on, amen, no, no witch doctor, no sorcerer, come on, amen, no psychic, come on, amen, has more revelation than the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, Amen. We are the ones who got the authority to discern and hear God's voice. And we can speak truth, come on, to a world. Come on and see salvation break out all over the world. Wherever we're at, praise the Lord. All right. Okay. Let's stop right here. So, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for the release, Father God, of more. And that even as we go into the next phase, God, this afternoon, I pray, Lord God, uh, uh, Lord God, that there will be uh, an, um, even more enrichment in the name of Jesus. I pray for an increase. Just pray in the spirit for a few moments with me. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Awaken, awaken, awaken. Awaken the church. Awaken the sleeping giant, Lord. We pray for prophetic words to be released to awaken the church. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Father. So this afternoon, what was coming to me is to talk about the breaker anointing. How many have heard of that before? The breaker anointing? And, and do you know that there's an anointing upon the church to break through spiritual climates? Come on, amen. And we can change our, the atmosphere around us. Come on, amen. I'm going to share some experiences with you about how that God has used us to break through certain climates and change things in churches. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. And, uh, woo, hallelujah. And I believe that the cities can be affected when people learn about these different types of anointings. All right, I'm going to turn it back over to your hands. All right. Amen. That's good. Praise God. Getting anything out of this? Well, isn't that good? You know, when you were sharing about the elephants, uh, the big tsunami, was it Sri Lanka a few years back? Um, they still use elephants there for work animals and so forth. And there was, I read a story, there was uh, two of them tied on their, you know, they put the little thing around there and tie them to a stake, and they think they can't get away because they've been taught that. Uh, there was two of them on a cement pad right by the water. And uh, people didn't recognize anything, what was going on, these elephants got a little bit disturbed, and they broke free, which is, they won't do that, but they broke free, ran up and stood on top of a hill. The tsunami came in, wiped everything out, and when the tsunami left, they walked back down and stood on their, on their cement pad. They felt it coming. Just like you said, they can, they can hear or they can feel through their feet. They felt the tsunami coming and said, we're out of here. Boy, how much more we as Christians should be able to be warned of stuff that's coming, you know. And we just do something out of character to God's saying, get out of here, man. There's stuff coming. 